Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and I have on the phone with me a uh, an alumni from A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. I have Marshall Bell, and he played Coach Schneider. Hello, Marshall. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for calling me. Not a problem. I'm glad to have you on here. Um, so I have about 10 questions I'm going to ask. Uh, the first okay. question I got is, uh, how did you get your start into acting? Uh, that takes time so i'll try to con- condense it as much as i can okay. my wife is uh gets is arguably the best costume designer in the world she gets that she actually has that said about her for film she's actually got four oscars and so she was working on a movie called um uh barry linden in dublin ireland and i met her there because i had known in another life the girl who was starring in it by the name of Marissa Berenson, we got introduced and then we hooked up and we've been together ever since. And over the years, she worked on a movie called Midnight Express and the director was Alan Parker and I became kind of friends with Alan Parker. And then he, it's more complicated than this, but he asked me finally to do a movie uh, called Birdie and uh, that was how I, that was my first movie. It was a studio movie and I had a little trick to do in it, and it got me noticed, and so that's how I got into the acting business. I got discovered. Awesome. That is so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was your audition like for A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge? <laughs> what, have you heard how it was like or anything? I haven't heard uh, the, uh, your story. I heard of some other people's stories from other franchises and uh, also from other A Nightmare on Elm Streets. Okay, so I had... Um... I had gone in on a movie called Stand By Me, okay. and uh, I got hired on that movie while I was walking down the hall um, by Rob Reiner. He came down the hall after me and hired me, hmm. and I mean, I, I, this is the third movie I was ever on, and, and I thought, my God, uh, I'm, a st- I'm huge. I'm going to get everything I go in on, you know? <laughs> so I was, I was out celebrating, if you get my drift, in 1980. Let's see. Yeah, 1985. (laughs) And uh, I was in the stage of celebration, and my agent called up and said, can you go over and see the people about Elm Street? So uh, I said, "Uh, yeah. (laughs) I was already in Levi's and everything, and, you know, kind of like not, I mean, I was celebrating. It was the 80s, whatever. Right. So I went in on the audition, and uh, they said... um, we're going to give you an improv, and the improv is uh, if you uh, if 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 the, the, you're the coach and you're an ex marine, and they're spreading rumors around the high school that you're gay. <laughs> how do you respond to that? And so I went haywire in the interview and drunkenly acted the whole thing out. They went whoa whoa whoa, and then they hired me. That is awesome. <laughs> Well, it's funny you mentioned that because that's similar to my next question um, because the big thing about A Nightmare on Elm Street to Freddy's Revenge was the whole homoerotic theme to it. So when you were filming the movie, did you notice the homoerotic themes in it? This is is my favorite question to answer. The (laughs) truth of the matter is this movie was made by very sort of straight people, okay? (laughs) Like, like, Bob, they did. Bob Shea, who made a movie called Reefer Madness earlier than that, <laughs> should know that the way the thing was written and the theme, and nobody had a clue, right? <laughs> so I had a clue, <laughs> you know, right. and, and, and my friend Robert Russler had a clue, and so yep. we would go, dude. Do you you do dig what's going on here, right? And uh, and he goes, well, dude, you know. And then I went back to my room and misbehaved in there. But anyway, I'm sober now, by the way. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so um, so uh, yeah. I mean, I, no, they they kind of didn't know yeah, up to the point, including the bar scene where the head of the studio was in black lipstick and a dog collar and didn't realize that there was anything. He just thought that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I I uh, interviewed Robert Russler about maybe a year and a half ago or so, and uh, mm-hmm. he, he he was talking about how he was dumbfounded that none of these people knew based on every single thing that's going on in this movie that this movie's homoerotic. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, he and I knew, and he and I were were good friends to this day. Awesome. So we knew. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the best part about filming a Nightmare on oh, Elm Street? Uh, oh, and you know, uh, yeah. one night I, I I got off after that bar scene. I got off and I met my wife and some friends for dinner. Yeah. And they said, what'd you do today? And I explained the scene and they looked at me and this was in the eighties. And they just looked at me with very sternly and said, but were you gay? <laughs> and I, I said, um, you know, I don't really, I mean, it was much more kind of outside than that. It was grosser than that actually. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, like they looked at me like that was the end of my career. You know? <laughs> and, I, and I just went ahead and drank and ate dinner. But uh, anyway, uh, the best part about Elm Street was um, getting to know the art behind the, the prosthetics and everything. Okay. Those, and I'm still friends with all the people in the awesome. in the makeup community. Yeah, awesome. Well, I mean, there were many good things. Meeting, you know, I'm friends with Mark and I'm friends with Robert to this day, okay. and I'm I'm ha- happy they are my friends. That's great. Um, what was the worst part about filming a Nightmare on Elm Street too? The same thing. <laughs> Lying down for. Nine hours while they glued my back on, <laughs> and knowing that if it didn't work, they were going to have to glue it on again. Oof. So the same thing was they're both my favorite thing and both the worst thing were wow. were, were, were equal. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so what was it like working with Robert England? Uh, well, you know he uh, was not with it. He was. I met him later. Okay. And of course, my feeling about Robert England is that's the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So I refer to him as our great leader because, right. and, and 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 not just because he was a good actor. It's his enthusiasm and energy to keep the franchise as powerful as it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I've just got tremendous admiration for him. That's He's awesome. a soldier. He's still a soldier. He's. Uh, and, and, and he's a talented actor who could have had a career doing anything, and he committed himself to that. That's awesome. And, and that, that took balls. It did. It really did. <laughs> Speaking of balls, <laughs> what, a, what a nice segue. Um, how was the scene where all of the balls attacked you and the jump rope attack, uh, how was that done? Mm. Um, you know, camera stuff and... Um, people kind of you know we didn't have a lot of technology then so people throwing balls around and cameras moving around and ropes being kind of held off camera and all that kind of stuff okay pretty cool um how was your death scene filmed and prepped uh well there were the prep was nine hours in the makeup th- thing and me going in there naked into the shower and uh, and hoping that it worked. Yeah. And then they filmed it and it did. That's great. Uh, that's awesome. Um, so uh, what was Jack Shoulder like as a director? Uh, you know, he, he's another guy that was a friend of mine uh, okay. and who's, who became a friend of mine. So uh, I really enjoyed. The, uh, I got every. I got what he meant when he wanted me to do it, and uh, he was a good director. Awesome. That's, That's great. What, I mean, you can't say that. You can't say more than that about a director. He was just good. Right. Exactly. Uh, what was your most memorable moment while filming A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge? Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, 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 the day that we were in the shower and the death scene. Right. I um, mean, you know, that's, yeah. you, that, that's one of the biggest. That's, that, that, I remember that scene from any movie, you know. Right, right. Um, and the last question I got for you is, uh, do you have anything you'd like to promote to our listeners? Um, I mean, I want them all to be kind to each other during these rough times. Right. And maybe get to uh, one of the online things and look up the Elm Street stuff. And, and they can know that uh, Heather, who did uh, Dream Warriors and Nine Barrels Elm Street Part 1, Got me to sit in on uh, the uh, the read through of, um, and I think that's on somewhere at the Whiskey A Go Go. We did a read through of, of Dream Warriors. It was very successful, actually. We raised money for an orphanage, and uh, uh, John Saxon's not well, so I replaced him in Nightmare Part Three. So I'm I'm totally Nightmare on Elm Street familyed out here. Nice, that's awesome. You know? Awesome. And, uh, and just, you know, uh, I recommend, uh, I don't know what to say. I, 
I think it's none of our business that people are telling us to wear masks and stay six feet apart from each other. So do right. it. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, are you um, are you are you doing any other movies at all? Well, I did one uh, for uh, you know I'm the only living actor that has worked for all people named Coppola. <laughs> I worked for Eleanor Coppola, Francis Coppola, Roman Coppola, uh, the granddaughter Gia Coppola, and Sophia Coppola. Nice. So I did a, I've did. done two movies for Gia, actually, for the granddaughter. And yeah. I, uh, I've got scenes in there with Colleen Camp, whose head I cut off in a movie called The Vagrant years ago. Nice. Which, by the way, if you're a slasher guy, The Vagrant's worth digging up. I don't know if you can dig it up. It's fun. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll look into Bill that. Paxton. Awesome. Yeah, I'll look into that. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm in that. And uh, let me think. Uh, I did a little uh, kind of a guerrilla film down in Oklahoma City okay. called All Terrain on, on the first uh, 360 cameras for virtual cameras, you know? Right, right. Uh, uh, who knows? You know? Right. I'm and around. Right, and you were amazing in A Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I I really loved your character. I thought it was a pretty funny character, and uh, it right. was it was one of the it was the unique character, not something you really saw in that you know that often in the '80s, especially in you know a horror franchise. So it was actually pretty cool to see something different and different t take on A Nightmare on Elm Street than any of the others in the series. Yeah, well, it was fun. I mean, come on, and you're really. Yeah. You're happy to have been in an Elm Street. Let's exactly, face it. and cool. I mean, getting killed by Freddy Krueger—that's that's anybody's dream. Hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm I'm totally committed to the franchise forever. Exactly. Loved every loved uh, the studio. Actually, liked Mr. Shea and everybody else too. That's awesome. Well, uh, I, I thank you, Marshall, for your time uh, for this interview. Okay. Well, anytime, and thank you for calling me. No problem. You what, have, what, I mean, yep. I mean, not, not a lot going on right now. <laughs> right. So, this is cool. <laughs> Definitely. You. No problem. I thank you, and uh, yeah, keep in touch, and uh, you stay safe, and have a great rest of your day. Hope I wasn't too loud. Sometimes I speak too loud. No. Nope. You need. That's okay. You can fix that. Right? <laughs> yes, I, that's why I recorded before we go live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank okay, you so bye -bye, much. Man. Yep. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Yep.